Welcome to the MJ38 Show, MJ38 Podcast, episode number six. We're coming in. We're landing the planes. Five is a lot. And six is like, okay, they, they kept going. They kept going. And they Hello. kept going. It's good to see Welcome everybody. Welcome to six. Welcome to six. Six I upside it. down. It's a nine now. It's a, well, not yet. Oh, but eventually. <laughs> I'm proud of six. Yeah. That's, that's great, right? That's a six times 1.5 hours. It it's feels like, hours. because the other thing. Yeah, is, it's a nine now. <laughs> yeah, let's go. That's my dog. Uh, because it's so much time to do it. It, it. Not really that much time, but it's a lot of commitment to do anything for like an hour a week on top of your whole other schedule. Yeah. And yeah, I'm weekend. proud of us. Thanks for yeah. all the work you do, bro. Thanks, bro. Absolutely. You we, go, too, bro. we go crazy, man. Yeah, it's a lot. But uh, welcome in. Hope your day is going amazing, ending amazing, continuing to be amazing. And if it sucks, we're going to turn that bitch around. Flip it. Let's flip it. Is that what we're doing today? Denzel in the plane. All right, fuck it. We were trying to land planes. Sometimes you got to flip them upside down. We're just, just Denzel in planes over here. Yeah, we turn the six upside down. Let's get this plane right. <laughs> Let's go. Yes. Fucking nice, yes. Bro. I'm gassed. It is uh, It's Friday. Welcome to Jersey different. Day. Yes. Am I right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Again, if you're just listening, you're not watching. Put on a jersey. It's Jersey Day. I'm not sure why, but we're going with Jersey Day. Yeah, it just felt right. Sometimes I like to just go with the vibe. So okay. throw on a jersey. Say, uh, where did that come from in your mind, I guess? I don't know. I just get inspired. Like sometimes it's it's like a sometimes I feel like the podcast or any kind of content I come from it from like a freestyle perspective. So like I just uh-huh. like get inspired by bars and I get inspired by a beat and I just go down that alleyway and I see what I find down there. Okay. And today was Jersey Day. Can't explain it. <laughs> I love you guys. I love it. Yeah, yeah. we're in a. I know it's right. R.I.P. Kobe Kobe Bryant Jersey. <sighs> Be- ba- beautiful baby blue. Gotta love it. Kobe Kobe's great man. Gotta love the yeah love that guy. I literally didn't appreciate him while he was alive. Isn't that crazy? Sad to say. It's so crazy that that, that happens. I mean, just a different, maybe, you were aware, but like, yeah, it was a different awareness. You, 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 you We were young. We yeah, were we young. Can't, it's hard to know what anybody like really represents yeah. until their we stories. We missed Jordan. You know, like, we, we like missed the Jordan era. Like, yeah. I didn't get to watch him. Not at all. Not in the same way I watched Kobe. No, I watched for The Last sure. Dance. For sure. One of the best document. It's my favorite documentary. It's amazing. Love the oh. So good, right? Love it. One of my favorite pieces of like media ever. Yeah, it was like a great prelude to yeah, like the Kobe era growing up in like the nineties and like the two thousands. Yeah, and like seeing what happened. Yeah, like like the the book before that. It's like a history <laughs> lesson. It was like yeah, I was handed. I was just like reading the NBA as I knew it when when it was introduced to me. Yeah, you get like the prequel like, oh, series, and you're yeah. like, oh my god, the NBA was lit. This story is crazy. Like the Knicks were nuts, the Pistons were nuts, mm-hmm. the Bulls were nuts. The East was sick. Yeah, crazy. Magic Johnson was crazy, <laughs> insane. He was running it prior to Michael Jordan. He's kind of yeah. like, and then Larry Bird's in that mix. It's all yeah, nuts. That era. So yeah, the last dance is amazing because it's like a history lesson, but also what Michael Jordan like actually represents is like it's crazy. He's crazy, and then you get his perspective. And I think he. It's just like when you listen to Tom Brady talk, you get a piece of greatness, or you listen to Michael Jordan talk, you get a different perspective of greatness. And then Kobe Bryant mm-hmm. has this like really. Uh, the best documentary on Kobe Bryant I've seen is The Redeem Team on Netflix, and he's just like a different reflection of greatness yeah. that I didn't appreciate until he was he was, he was gone. Mm-hmm. He's crazy, yeah. They're all crazy. He was like that. Like that. Big old diff. I'm rocking Vince Carter today. Yes, Matthew's in the retro Vince Carter's. Elbow in the room. <laughs> the Raptors. Raptors yeah. edition. <laughs> What's up, Jersey? Yeah. Yeah. I like kicking up the Jersey land any kind of, anytime I can, you Let's know. Go. It's funny how the Raptors Jersey are like man. a Drake reference almost. And yeah. Chicago, like, is a Michael Jordan reference. The Bulls. Yeah, the pe- they sell shorts with Bulls logos on them for, like, 80 bucks. And I'm like, why? And it's like, I realized yesterday, it's because you're playing off the Michael Jordan brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of piggybacking off that popularity. Jordan's so big, you can just sell Chicago <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And it, well, they got me once. They didn't get me twice, but they got me once. Yeah, I was you... like, why are these sweatpants $100? <laughs> they just say Chicago on them. I was like, oh, because fucking Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah. It, yeah. Bigger than Chicago. <laughs> but yeah. The truth behind that. But yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. Kobe. Jersey Day. Gotta love it. Coming in on a Friday. A little diff. Little it's bit. okay, though. It's a great day. We're going to be going to a birthday party later. Yeah. It's going to be a fun time. Jumping yeah. around on trampolines and shit. It's a great day. Oh, except for your ankle. <laughs> Jumping around trampolines and shit, except for Matt's ankles. So kind of, kind of, kind of I wasn't sure if I wanted to go there for sure. I'm sorry, but, but it, the trampoline <laughs> led me there. I should be resting my body. I definitely am like on rest days right now. Designated rest days. And I played basketball two days ago, and I was getting bucks. Was bucks. Getting buckets. Means I was we'll scoring a lot of points. Yes. For any normies out there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyways... So then the next day, I'm like, uh, I want more books. That felt so good. 
<laughs> go to the gym even though my legs are screaming at me. My whole body hurts. Mm. And like in the first game and like the fifth possession, I just grade three sprain, busted oh. on the basketball court. The oh. whole crowd is like, oh, I'm crawling off like fucking biting my jersey or like fucking Ronda right, Ginobili right. in the playoffs. I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> man. Um, no. Yeah, that shit hurt, bro. So Selling out for a ball? I was, I was fading a screen, and then the guy kind of just, like, threw to the open area, and I tried to, like, cut forward and then cut to the side, and then when I went from, like, forward to the side, my ankle was not coming with me. My foot didn't also travel to the side. My whole body weight traveled to the side, but my foot stayed, and we bent on that. Oh. <laughs> we bent on my ankle. So now it's, like, grapefruit-sized. Um, I made it to the gym this morning. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir. We got to lift him, but it's hard to walk. So oh, I don't know about gosh. trampoline basketball today. Yeah. <laughs> some light slam ball. I'm wearing a Vince Carter jersey. I think I got to do some work. You have, to, you have to honey dip in the room. <laughs> it's destiny. How could I not? How could I not? Yes. This yeah. feels like I've lived this day before in the past. It feels like I okay. rolled my ankle the day before someone's birthday. But the difference is, is at 10 years old, I was like fucking sad oh. to be having a sprained ankle and not being able to play like jump basketball. But now at 28, I'm like, it's okay. Like, <laughs> I'll be all right. I'm just going to hang out with Justin. <laughs> you know, so I don't need to yak on these folks. <laughs> but this day, and such. this day, if it does feel deja vu-esque, which is kind of crazy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And you also talked about rolling your ankle before prior on the pod too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing that. <laughs> See, I should have been resting from that rolled ankle. <laughs> but I'm just bad about that. All day, I've just been thinking about all the times all my coaches and my dad were like, you're fucking dumb. Why don't you stop? Oh, kid. Watch yeah. out now. Yeah, when you're tired, when you don't get hurt, yourself. it's like, what are you doing? It's because I don't want to stop. Like, we get to this, we get to these pinnacles, and I'm like, the only thing that could happen here that would make this unenjoyable is if we went downward. And the only way to not go downward is to go forward. So I'm like, we got to keep going so we don't, so we can, like, be grateful for these blessings that we have to, to a degree. I don't, it's hard to understand how to rest. Like, I get mm-hmm. it, but it's like, you must take step backwards to not fall down. Maybe rest is not that step backwards per se, but rest is just like uh, just non non activity, playing a non activity, taking nap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was supposed to. I had naps on the schedule the, nap the past up. two. If I would have napped, I'd be so nap happy. Right? I'd be dunking on kids big, today. Big swing. <laughs> I'd be dunking on kids. <laughs> I'd be so so far into windmills. It'd be ridiculous. Mm. Started damn solar well, farm. Life's a crazy <laughs> thing, a man. I'll be the first one to say God's still working on me. I don't. I don't got it all figured out. We're all still working. We're all still searching. We're, gotta, all, we're all still fumbling and tripping and stumbling to the. Wasn't I talking about how God will put you in injury jail? Yes, He did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right to jail. <laughs> I feel like whenever my I rolled my ankle on the basketball court, the first thing I'm judging is like how much it hurts. I'm like, oh yeah, pain, right? Pain. <laughs> ah. But particularly for me, I'm trying to find out how much it hurts to find out how much I really fucked myself because I've done this a few times. Mm-hmm. And I've, it, I've done the song and dance. What's the severity here? Yeah, right? Because sometimes you can just tighten up the laces. There's levels to everything. There's levels to rolling your ankle. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> a two is so manageable. You can keep yeah. playing on a two or three. Like, give yourself five possessions and you won't even feel it. Like, mm-hmm. it's better for you to keep playing than to stop and swell up. But this one hurt like a motherfucker, like, right Off away. Just, just bad. Mm. Um. So then I was like... What am I looking at here? Three months? Six What's months? What's the new stock? <laughs> a boot? Oh, don't give me a boot. Come a on. Boot, please. And I th- I think just by judging it, like, we got up, we went to the gym today, we were walking around on it. I don't think anything's broken, which is nice. I've yeah. had a broken ankle before, so. Oof. Yeah, we talked about that too. Last yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember. I, I, I went to foot. So the day that I found out I had a broken ankle, I went to football practice that day. And I'm like playing fucking outside linebacker. And I'm like. With a broken ankle. Yeah. Oh. And I'm like dropping in his own coverage. Son. And then I turned to open to run to the other side of the field where they threw the ball. And it's just like, I can't run. I just can't run. Like I start limping. Like imagine, yeah, a hyena trying to get away from a lion, but its legs broken. A broken legged hyena. <laughs> I just gave a nice visual for the YouTube. <laughs> if you're just listening, check oh out the YouTube. So this is a very nice YouTube episode for it. everybody. <laughs> But a broken leg tie. The coach was away. like, "This motherfucker, Matthew, Son, you gotta get out." What the hell is that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what in the hell? <laughs> That's about right. 
Oh my god! Yeah, I can't and really I, imagine. I told him like, to run with a broken ankle. Yeah, I can't. I it's think some goggin shit. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't gonna say, "Hey, I can't do this drill." Like, uh-huh. nah, dog. You you have to pull me out. I could do it. <laughs> That's me. The unless, unless broken bones disqualify you, which I haven't seen or heard. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm good. I'm good to go. <laughs> And they took me to the trainer, and the trainer was like, "Send this, go to the fucking hospital, dog. This is not, yeah, go to the hospital. You need Dr. House. <laughs> yeah, like, like five seconds into the look. And then, sure enough, they took the x-rays, and that motherfucker was broken. Mm. So, part mm. of my language, too. I'm having fun on a Friday. It's a David Bro, Goggins. Uh, we talked about David Goggins. Like, I just catch the beat. <clears throat> yeah, he ran on some broken some broken bones, some some such like that. Drops the F-bomb a lot, too. <laughs> Check it out in his first book. Can't hurt me. Yeah, he's great. I want to talk less about other people on our podcast and just talk about us on our podcast right that's true I that's something i strive i like bringing that, i just like bringing like i like shining lights to ideas and i'm like this is a i stand on this rock speaking of ideas that we need and want to bring into the podcast we should bring up the life of pi today yes yes my circle radiate light we are my circle radius pi we are talking about life of pi <laughs> Right now, (laughs) right now, I'm just telling you that we are not going to be discussing the movie today. We did not do our homework and catch up on the life of Pi. So if you came here with already doing that homework, I apologize. I apologize. How many people? I've seen it. Did we just burn? I've seen it. (laughs) We just burned a good amount of people. Hopefully not. Feel good right now. If you watch Life of Pi, like I'm fucking proud of you. You haven't seen it, but I've seen it. I know it's a great movie, but. Also, to, to the effect of what you're saying, I'm proud of you. Yes. We gave you homework to some degree. I'm sorry. Yes. That's everything in life. And then the teacher's like, it's not due today. I'm, I'm, jo- I'm just joshing. <laughs> I'm hungover. I'm jo- <laughs> We're going to watch a movie. Teacher's like, <laughs> Bill Nye, some, anybody? The Life of Pi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Teachers are people too. <laughs> it took how long until you figured that out? Somewhere in college, like 18, 18, 19. Isn't that nuts? I was like, wow. Holy shit. <laughs> if you were 15 My and peers that, are about to be going and doing the thing that I was like, we all just like did. <laughs> They're not qualified to do that, right? Oh, wait, are they? <laughs> My friend doesn't know shit, right? And he's teaching people. Stuff about They're things. They're responsible for the youth. They're <laughs> responsible for the next generation. You're the stuff sayer? <laughs> You're the thing correspondent? <laughs> Reporting live here. Things about stuff. I'm John. I'm live from the scene with the... And here's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but if you watched it i'm sure you enjoyed it because it was i thought it was great when i watched what was it your, wow god we should watch it we'll watch it that's our that's our homework we'll watch it it's an assignment a hard assignment why didn't we watch it let's go over the film <sighs> our fans deserve it time <laughs> time you know life life and time life and time huh yeah it sounds like an excuse <laughs> <soul of it. laughs> it sounds like this sounds like down on the baseline talk <laughs> If you run, run. <laughs> we will be perfect in every aspect of the game. If you don't watch a film, you will run a mile. Perfect. I'll run a mile for it. I'll run it. Uh, oh, yeah. Man. Why didn't I watch it? it? Didn't. It's hard to do the things that you say you're gonna do all the time. I'm, I'm pretty good. I've got a great bat and at bat percentage. It's like baseball though. That's like three hundred's a great percentage. Thirty <laughs> percent. You're rocking. <laughs> You're like elite. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucking people up with your honey. No, I'm playing. I try to I try to legitimately not it, it fucking like in my mind I've got like a stat total for like lies I've said and then what accumulates into that is like things I've said that I would do that I like did. And then like I need that for me personally, I respect myself when that shit's at like fucking ninety eight, ninety nine overall stat. Mm-hmm. Like in NBA it'd be hard to get a rebound on me. Yeah. <laughs> most days because i just really live and die by that with my own respect for myself which mm-hmm. i also value some people don't value self-respect like yeah, setting you, that standard that i'm maintaining it or like yeah yeah and and so like but then like telling my fans that i'm gonna watch a movie with them and then i don't watch that movie with them i'm just like ah i broke my own heart oh today should suck i should roll my ankle and be in injury jail <laughs> ah, injury jail <laughs> I took the hit for both of us. No, I'm like, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that I'd watch it again, but I've seen it. 
true, true, true. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think the, I don't think the universe it's or God weird. or the karma is that severe either. either. I'm just <laughs> just doing the bit. Yeah, but sometimes I the like to think that. Yeah, sometimes about. whenever you get fucked on like that or like karma, <laughs> like uh, you're like, okay, I'm taking a hit for something. I'm like, okay. yeah. I'm getting more in harmony with the universe. Maybe we but just this is what it costs. Okay, it's not that bad. There are much there are much worse prices to pay. You know? I just had an idea. Okay. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> that idea was just like what? <laughs> <laughs> It was. It was. Okay. okay, so what if like cause like a lot of people don't really be fucking with mysticism in like their religion or like I feel like Eastern ideologies of philosophy mm. and like God and stuff like that, it's a lot easier to be like more mystic in that sense. And what that means is like, kind of like just like believing in miracles or like thinking that you, the, the Holy Spirit can like kind of charge you up or you can feel that kind of thing or God can kind of talk to you or you can see signs in the in the wind. Like, yeah, you can communicate with something because it seems as if, uh, okay, sorry, keep going. I think that that's just how I define like mysticism and religion to a degree, right? Uh-huh. And like um, some like more scholar like, Religious, theologists. yes, theologists, <laughs> scholar like religious folk. <laughs> this is a fucking de- better word for that, right there, sir. That's, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, my that's dog. Nice. The, our writing room is sick. So theologists would argue. I think they argue sometimes that like the mysticism is what creates a barrier between people actually having the like hard skill set that it requires to like have a relationship with God, because you create like this mysticism that allows you to be like kind of willy-nilly with what the fuck you're doing here on earth and within that debate and barrier i just realized that like maybe good things and like bad things are like just happening they just happen at a rate it's like 80 percent good 20 percent bad it's like over your life that happens but like you tell the narrative to yourself consciously or subconsciously of your own karma right both right and like you when the bad things happen you can be like well, life's just fucking me over every day. That's my life. Ain't that some shit? Yeah. Um, again. I have a much more nuanced perception of what's like what I think's going on is like I think that like the good karma, good things, like good things happen to me, and I'm like, that's that's good karma because I need to keep doing good so those good things can keep happening to me. But then you like do fuck up on the, your own along the way. And then bad things happen, and you can assign your own fuck ups to the bad thing, and then kind of like uh, not absolve yourself, but be like move on from them, mm-hmm. and be like I kind of paid a price for that. Mm-hmm. And what that's allowing your, yourself to do is to build the narrative of like your own reality. Yeah. And like when you think you deserve good things to happen because you've paid your prices, then like good things happen, or at least you fucking notice them in a way that that narrative is true to you. Yeah, 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 exactly. And like I think exactly. that, but so you can't really ignore this karmic feeling. Just because, yes, like, good things and bad things happen in a vacuum, regardless of what the fuck you think. Like, good things and bad things happen to, like, turtles. But, yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, save the turtles! <laughs> I'm using your fucking straws, you <laughs> sons of bitches! Do you think that, like, the shitty turtles catch more straws? Or, like, <laughs> get yeah, fucking... Maybe they're, ass- like, like, the turtles that are assholes to other turtles? Yeah. Or, like, other animals below themselves in the... Hierarchy of the animal kingdom. And are they more likely to get stuck in like beer can rings? Yeah. <laughs> like, like you see, Fred got caught with a dick, right? <laughs> You're so Old yeah, Testament, Louis. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think that's fucking like good. Good things and bad things happen, but like mm-hmm. with this mysticism is important because I think whether you whether you believe you deserve. Let me just get rid of the you talk. Whether I believe good things, I deserve them. I think that determines whether or not, like, I accept them and, like, mm-hmm. embrace them and have the attitude to, like, actually catch them yeah. versus just thinking, like, with girls, for instance, it's, like, I remember forever, the difference between being able to talk to a girl and not talk to a girl is, like, so, it was just, like, a fraction of perspective. It was yeah. just, like, one loosening of one bolt was just, like, oh, like, I can just talk to girls. It's so easy now. And I feel like. There's people. Just, they're just people. There's people. And that Involved same. people. It's just, like, a same perspective switch. For whatever the fuck I was just talking about, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We're kicking around some cans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I found, there's, there's a nugget the in mysticism, there. What, okay, whenever, whenever you were saying that theologists are talking about mysticism being like a barrier, what exactly, I guess, what is mysticism? What are they trying to use that term to describe? Or is that explained? I can like... So I guess, yeah, I, guess I can give you a sense. Of... It'd, be like, it'd be like a rain dance. 
I think they perceive it to be like a rain dance. It's like, okay, you can't fucking make it rain, dog. Like, stop. Like, it's going to rain when it's going to rain. And you're kind of like wasting your time and energy and like trying to take credit for like something that you don't really have control over at all. And like, I get it. But like, at the same time, like, it's hard to feel like you're good. This is where the thought ties back in. It's hard to feel like you deserve a miracle. It's mm-hmm. hard to truly feel like you deserve that. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. At the end of the absolutely. day, on your deathbed, did you deserve a fucking miracle in your life, or did you not really deserve it? Were you kind of playing shitty? Were you not really a good sportsman? Did you not really respect yourself or anybody? Or yeah, play with utmost love and respect. Right. Yeah. And like, and try your hardest. That's another thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, did you leave it all on the field? Yes. Did you even like? Would you have given yourself the win if you could have helped you from an objective place? I don't even know if people can conceptualize that, but like, <laughs> I think about this shit. Oh yeah. Yeah. I swim in it. <laughs> and the same thing was with girls once yeah. i got to a place where i realized like there's no reason for me to think that i'm not worth this girl's time like there's no reason for me to think that this girl wouldn't want to talk to me like that's like i'm worthy of this girl's yeah, attention so maybe or yeah. maybe not but like there's no reason to limit myself from that potential reality existing yeah 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 and there's a classy way to do it and like not be overly yeah like braggadocious that, that's like the you could do it nice. You could do it right. You could do it sexy. I actually or had you could that. not and be like Ooh. hated for it Ooh. almost to some degree. They're like, trip and fall. Trip and fall. <laughs> trip and fall. Such a fine line. Sorry. <laughs> it's such a fine line. Yeah. Some people, uh, Denzel Washington, I think, is like, Dave Chappelle is like, uh, insecure people love to see a uh, confident man fall. I saw that. Yeah, you saw that? You know what coward, I'm saying? Yeah, like a, a there coward's is. most, or what is it? So, something like that. Yeah. Something well, a coward A loves coward delights in a confident man failing. Mm. And like, yeah, fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> Another thing is I've, I play that role. I want to invite more people to like this side of the fence, like to be like confident, to like live your best life, to pursue the things that gave me freedom. Because I feel like a fucking responsibility to not be selfish. And so I'm like in, inviting with that energy to like everybody around me. Yeah, absolutely. And if you hating on all of us, then it's like a fucky thing in my mind. Yeah. A little bit. I gotta try. I'm, I'm God's working on me. It's not gonna prosper. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but like it's, you said, it's not, it's not gonna, gonna prosper. prosper. Nah. That's silly. Nah. You're, putting, you're putting the eggs in the wrong basket, bro. It's so hard. <laughs> it's the best when you watch a weapon formed against you not prosper. And you're just like, why aren't why are you not gonna bury me alive? God. 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 God, we turned into a Christian podcast real fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> And I'm sorry we didn't watch Life of Pi. I'm really Golly, yeah. I yeah. really am. Yeah. I apologize. I feel like I, I feel terrible. Well, hold on. Another thing is... <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Here's another thing I thought about it. Okay. Where do, where do you stream Life of Pi? I'm sure... Uh, I'm not sure if it's on any streaming like Netflix or Hulu or anything like that. But Can I'm you sure them? you could probably just uh, watch it on like Vudu. If you like Google Life of Pi, I'm sure it would come up on like Vudu Fucking or Vudu, Amazon or... <laughs> Yeah, you should like buy it on Amazon Prime or uh, Soap Today. If, all right, all if right. You, if you know what I'm talking about, then you know. He's scrambling. He's scrambling. But I just looked up on the Life of Pi, and okay. and you said Voodoo check. Yeah. Amazon. Apple TV three ninety nine. Okay. If Apple you have TV. Amazon Prime, Amazon Pro- okay, and Paramount Plus. So never mind. I was gonna try to say we made it hard on people because it's not on Netflix or Hulu, but like. You named like three places off. <laughs> you were like, if you did any digging at all, you definitely could have watched it. You dug it a little bit. Come on. I know what you would have found. And if you know what's up to that, then you know what's up. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more than that. <laughs> Respect. Respect it. Respect it. Okay, so moving on from What that. do you think the percentages <laughs> of people that watch our show that didn't watch that movie? That didn't watch it? Probably like 100%. <laughs> Probably 100%. You're not committed enough to this program, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Maybe that's why. I could be totally wrong, but that's, that's There's why. There's someone out there that's going to text us. They're going to be like, I, 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 watched it. I was excited to talk about it with you guys. I watched it. I, I, now it's not going to hit. I had notes. <laughs> I will watch it. And then we will post, well, no promises, but. Okay. Yeah, don't, I don't commit now. I'm not no, no, my, commit now. Yeah, yeah, you felt me feel that line. <laughs> I love you guys. I'm sorry. I'll be better for you. That's one thing I can't commit to. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm sure a lot of them have already seen it. It's a very popular movie. Very popular movie. I rolled my ankle. Jeez. Didn't have a great headspace, Doc. 
<laughs> it's okay. All right, I'm getting off of that. I'm getting off of that. What's new in your life, bro? Oh, man. Uh, just doing this pod, bro. Yeah, just doing this pod. And, it's fucking tight, uh, right? Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. Like learning like Adobe Premiere Pro and like the, the inner workings of the machine. You know, because, yeah, some people are interested in cars. And this is like the inner workings of like podcasts and inner workings of music videos and content. I'm like, oh, like if you have a Premiere Pro, like ac- accessibility, you just like take all the content. Like just do it. It's tight. The, and, like, there's no middleman between you and content cre- creation. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is what they're using. Like, yeah. You and your product ultimately because content creation is a business and then you need to sell product and product mm-hmm. is the content. So like, but there's so many middlemen between you and your product. It's like, mm-hmm. imagine having a business plan, but like you don't even have the factory for the car parts that you're trying to man- manufacture. Yeah, you need someone to build you the building to do your business in. Golly. Right. <laughs> but yeah, we have the same problem of like infrastructure issues, uh-huh. but it looks like fucking lights and stuff. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Whole yeah, thing. Site. So yeah, that's really been taking up a lot of the time. And then uh I guess yeah, we're trying to just finish up that three pack, bro. That's been taking up some of the time. We're trying to get that knocked out and uh we're just trying to get, link up with our audio engineer to get that synced up and like all the lyrics touched up and finished and volumes all adjusted with the beat mixing mastering. Everything takes a really long time. Everything though. That's another middle man thing, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's why Russ was like, fuck all of that. I'm gonna do it all myself. And it's like, okay, I, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. I see, I get it. I understand. Our producers make us sound really good though. Not that, that we don't sound great like on our own. Yeah, we can figure it out. They make us sound really good. It would just take time. It would just take time, just like anything. Just like learning how to do all the podcast stuff and yeah. learning how to make beats. Attention. Time, attention, and energy. Where your attention goes, your energy flows. See, we have such a like limited scope to hand out to all the things. We it's do like, have limited resources in that regard. We only have like 18 hours of conscious life a day, roughly, if you're getting some good sleep. If you're getting some good sleep, bro. Or I guess 16 hours with eight hours of sleep. Yeah. Or 18 with six hours. And 16, I mean, you're not, it's hard to use them all effectively. And if eight of them are at a shift, one of them's at a workout, you cook them with seven. <laughs> Cooking with a seven block. And yeah, you gotta get ready for work. And then you gotta come <laughs> back and get ready for not work. Okay, what do you give that? Like in, let's say. 30 minutes both ways at least. Okay. 45 minutes by hour and a half total. Like getting dressed into my clothes and getting dressed out of my clothes. Okay, maybe less than that. No, no, I'm not. I guess, I, 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 I'm, I guess the whole thing of getting ready. Yeah. I guess I that for, me, for me, that includes, yeah, like getting dressed, getting my food and stuff ready, my cup and like my water and like my things for after the shift in my car. <laughs> Like my snacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit ready. I guess it wouldn't take that that long. Maybe like 15, 20 minutes on both sides. Okay. Yeah, maybe tw- not not even 20 minutes to get like wound down. But I guess I'd include also in the winding down time, like the getting undressed, getting in the jammies. Yeah. Drinking a protein shake or water or whatever. And then like sitting in the bed and chilling for a little bit. Yeah. You have to do all that shit. Yeah. I was thinking about that yesterday when I was fucking like toasting bread and like doing a dish, like yeah, so washing a cup. The shift bleeds out. You know, <laughs> it's not just an eight hour shift. That bitch bleeds. And you got to drive there. That was about to, I was that was my next part of the formula. I'm gonna keep going down the train with you. We're on the train. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> I would say the like, let's say it's 15 minutes both ways just to get dressed because it's like the shower too. And you got a shower. Come on. Work. Yeah, I got a shower. Yeah. No, Thanks, fuck I, that. I'm taking an hour just for prep and deep prep. Okay. <laughs> and then the drive, we'll say. What's the average drive? What do you think the average commute is in America? 22 minutes. 22 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably about right. But it also depends. There, there's got to be two categories. Some people work from home. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, true. And, and some people... But that's still a commute. <laughs> you can still be late. <laughs> I'm sure it happens all the time. I'm sure managers <laughs> of people who work from home are like, how the fuck are you late? How? <laughs> there's people listening to this podcast that were late for a, a Zoom meeting this week. And they're like... <laughs> Uh, it's tough it's it, because being on time is difficult it requires a skill set like that's it the does. thing it's weird it's weird it's like no matter how close you live to work you're gonna be late sometimes no yeah you have to like it requires a hatchet if you don't have the on time hatchet you can't be on time like you oh i always thought like i you just gonna, <laughs> i don't know what i thought <laughs> if i just thought that most days i'd like show up and i'd be like yeah on time there we go <laughs> you know and then you show up some days and you're like, well, I'm a little early. You show up there some days, I'm a little late. So, but like, you know, you're right about there. It's like, no, fucking no. Like you have, for me personally, it's like I carve out like something to do prior to the thing that I have to be on time for. So that way I'm like, I'm going to go do the thing I'm supposed to do like an hour before the thing 
I'm supposed to be on time for. And then even if I'm like 45 minutes late to the thing I was supposed to do, it's still like it, it takes the buffer takes care of like all traffic. It takes care of like all um, like if I forgot some shit, I could just go back and get it like that. Mm-hmm. I've been doing that for a year and a half and it makes it like so simple that it's ridiculous. But I didn't have the buffer before. And then, yeah, I don't even know. I watched my mom like never be on time. I love you, mom. She's fucking saint. Saint, saint. mom. Love you, Kelly. <laughs> I watched her not be on time like anywhere for like a long time. And it's just like a family curse almost to like have to be like, get in the car, get in the car, get in the car. <laughs> We're fucking going, baby. <laughs> yeah, hit that yellow, hit that yellow. Don't you fucking stop. Don't you? It's a red now. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Like, Mm. um (laughs) and like i don't like that feeling personally i hate that feeling of like there's only so much day we're even talking about here yeah there's only so much life yes bro i like listening to some larry june like (laughs) and i'm like sitting in traffic just like like i don't care i'm not you can cut me off like i don't care like i'm in my own fucking world you know what i'm saying i'm so ahead i'm fine yeah see i like that feeling like i feel i'm so ahead (laughs) i can't even wait to get into my car just so i can like bask in that like some of the best 20 minutes of I'm my up. day <laughs> <I'm up. laughs> i look fresh i'm gonna work out fresh i'm gonna get fresh for work like mm-hmm. uh, everything bang bang i got this little revolver loaded of my whole day just like ready to fire it all off it's killing it but on the way to everything whenever all the dominoes are set that's just like uh it's just such relief for a moment i love yes. that feeling yeah 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 God, what the way fuck different. are we talking about? Way different being ahead. I guess uh, driving to work. People, how are you late for work if you're working from home? <laughs> Create know? a buffer. Like Create maybe, a buffer. Yeah, you have a writing session. That's what I would do if I worked from home. Or like a cup of coffee. Or like aim to make breakfast or some shit. I don't Get know. Get an ice bath. Yeah, that'd be great. Get an ice bath. Holy I shit. One. I ordered one a couple days ago. Hey, even if too. you miss the ice bath, you'll be on time to work. <laughs> you're like, fuck that. I'm just going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> not today, not today. I'll clock in early. <laughs> Give yourself a way harder thing to do. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. That'll work. That'll work. There you work. go. Yeah. That'll get you motivated. Yeah. That's the ice hatchet. Yeah. There you go. A lot yeah, of it. I ordered one. I'm going to try to start doing that in the morning. An ice hatchet? Billions. Yeah. <laughs> one of those uh, inflatable uh, ice baths? Yeah. It's like a portable ice bath. Nice. Yeah. It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. And I also saw like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just like freeze some water bottles and just like throw the frozen water bottles in there. Nice. And like some ice baths. Just reuse those over yeah. and over again? Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yes, bro. It's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be cold. I need I need one now. Like so bad. Like, yeah, <laughs> my foot is fucked. It's like three minutes. Three if I minutes. show you to scare the kids. Three. <laughs> three minutes. Oh! <laughs> 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 um, three minutes is not bad, especially because like at first when I'm like getting adapting to the ice bath, I don't like to stir it. So like really, it's just a minute and a half of like extremely cold, and then it starts to like come down, and then it's like. You're like, oh, okay, I can do the rest of this. Just but breathe through it. Just breathe through just it. Just breathe through it. But, like, if you're in one of the ones per- that propels itself, or if you, like, kind of, like, walk around in it so that you kind of, like, stir Sift up the, water, the yeah. shit, it gets, it, I mean, it's fucking bad, dude. Yeah. We did it for the numb shot, and it was fucking tough, it dude. It was cold. It was cold. Like, I, it was so hard. Oh, yeah, uncontrollable shivers. Bro. Uncontrollable. You would like, have to control them. You'd have to, like, consciously be like, no. Okay, hold on. Three, two, one. <sighs> okay, I'm good for this, like, ten seconds. And then and then she'd shoot for ten seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it'd be like, no one would say anything. We'd just lose it. <laughs> like, oh, calm down, calm down. All right, gentlemen. Down. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of fun. <laughs> it was so fun. It was so fun. It was like high pressure modeling. It was high high, in, high stakes, high intensity posing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. High stress environment. Yeah, that shit was tight. It was cool. Yeah, and then like we got it. And then uh, it was like kind of a not a cold day or cold evening. We shot it in the nighttime, and it wasn't like a cold night per se, but it was definitely in, like the sixties. I would say. 50s. Yeah, that was not helping. Yeah, but like whenever we got out of the ice bath, I was like warm. You know. I was yeah. Just, oh yeah. Yeah, I was like, it's not even that cold out here. It's like yeah. way warmer out here than it is in that ice bath. <laughs> yeah, it felt. It just felt so I good it was to gonna get... be freezing. Oh yeah, like. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was gonna stand out and be like super, super cold. Nah, sixties good. Oh, yeah. A whole cake just walked in here. This is the nuts cake. We have a whole party going on. Oh, we should show gracious. it on the pod. Okay. Well, we're going to have to cut real quick. Oh, okay. Heard. Cut. All right. Back in it again. Cake was Another delicious. Another word from our sponsor that does not exist. We ain't going to do that quite yet. But if you would like the advertising spot, we're open to the possibility. I'm open to the possibility. Yeah. we. You know? Yeah. Let's talk. You know? Let's negotiate. <laughs> Absolutely. That'd be super great. Yeah. Shout out. 
Anybody. Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, a cake just walked in. Big old cake. As I mentioned, going to a birthday party later. I thought a stripper might pop out. <laughs> <laughs> Small stripper, but. <laughs> <laughs> you have a doll in that part. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the cake was huge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. I'm, 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 I don't know. I don't know why I busted your chops. I'll just do a fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, going to a birthday party later. Love, yeah. it's crazy because yeah, she's uh, she's turning ten. She's turning ten. So yeah, as I mentioned, why is that be, cool? Uh, jumping around, jumping on trampolines and shit. But uh, ten is crazy because I think it's. I thought about the, like the number ten, and I've had this kind of. I, I think I was just like kind of there was a point in life where I would go and just like uh, go like lay out in the sun for like think 10 15 shit. minutes yeah it's like think and meditate in the sun not too long yeah it's like 15 minutes total maybe 10 minutes like when we would suntan yeah it's like and like in that space I was like be thinking and I remember in that uh, in one of those sessions I was thinking about the numbers one through ten and I was like why why did we choose to add the second digit or you know it's double digits like why did where did that Where'd the need for that come from? Why, Why don't we just like draw more fucking shapes? Why wasn't there just another obscure random <laughs> a- like, random symbol that represented real- ten items? I just realized that like yeah, you fucked me up just now. <laughs> because like eight's just like two circles. The infinity, yeah. And then nine's like a circle and a line down it. Yeah. And then you could have just done like a different like, hieroglyph. Ha-ha. Yeah. <laughs> That's ten items worth or whatever. Ten yeah. what ten whatever. You could use the whole like alphabet eight. back then or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Go so, on. Very strange. So yeah, I was just like, why is that? Why is fuck me up a little bit? <laughs> it's it's kind of arbitrary. Someone was just being symbolism. smart. They were like, we don't have to make up all. I'm not making up all this shit, dog. Like I'm mm. making up nine, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's it. You can just reuse them for the rest of the numbers. <laughs> you don't okay? need all that shit, bro. That's just abs- you're, you're dumb. You're you think dumb, the kid. math came first or the laziness came first? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You it's... think mathematicians though? Um, maybe. I don't know. You think that's, it's more likely question. historians know or mathematicians know? Probably maybe historians. mathematicians would probably. I don't know. Historians probably. I don't. Probably, probably both. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's just like an, an, an allusion to the idea that like elevation is a real thing. Or like you can go from a single digit to a double digit to a triple digit to it. Like there's, there's levels to the shit. It stacks up. As we were talking about being stacked up, I think that's kind of like that is real. Like we have a whole nother thing for it. I'm not sure why that, that happens. Maybe, maybe there's an answer for that. I would love to know. Yeah, hit us up. <laughs> Send me a link. Or give me an interview to watch or something. Either way. Because it's a bold claim to think somebody was like, wait, wait. I know we have this number thing going on. I stayed up all night thinking of a much better way we could do this. Back when, like, motherfuckers were wearing, like, animal skins and shit. Or whenever, like, numbers. <laughs> when did math become, like, math? Like, so, like sophisticated math so, with a top hat and a fucking monocle. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Math. I don't think there were a lot of cavemen that were like, well, I'm kind of more of an introvert. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to work on the numbers. Expressing myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to be a STEM major. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, nah. I don't, you know, but. They're like, one animal. Like two animal, like one animal could feed four of us. Okay, there's four of us, one animal. There are two animals, that's eight of us. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Dude, I think if you were doing that, you'd be the smartest fucking caveman around the block. Like, like I don't know it went that far. But maybe. Probably, but maybe. Maybe not that, that sophisticated, but it went that far. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Uh, because you would have not to. Not that articulated, but it was that far. Because sure. we'd have to kill shit. Like, yeah. It'd be, it'd be a complicated process. Go get it. Yeah. <laughs> There'd have to be fucking, like, communication. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with that. For sure. But math was, yeah, there's always the so that of leads, things. But that leads me to believe that the time in which they were fucking drawing the first numbers. The symbolism of this, what represents one item. Right? Two, three. We yeah, should, who decided that? We should look up when in modern day. Shit. When did, <laughs> I didn't agree to this. I don't this. think my tax money went to a system where I had a choice <laughs> in any of that shit. <laughs> where are my rights? Uh, uh, the other thing is maybe like the number one, two, three, like as we know it, is like that maybe there weren't tenths hundredths and that's like a metric thing right i'm not 100 percent sure damn we're stupid we don't know <laughs> i guess that is more metric system based if they do like me- like meters and centimeters because like we ever are we measure in foot and feet and yard or i guess yards is metric as well no yards is us yards is us football baby yeah <laughs> you imagine if nfl yeah, football I guess it's meters is like the equivalent to a yard it's like pretty close yeah it's really close right right yeah but yeah feet is like 12 inches and that's uh, they 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 do things in tens and hundreds to get get to that. 
The earliest evidence of written mathematics dates back to the ancient Sumerians who built the earliest civilizations in Mesopotamia. I'm talking about Marduk, bro. animal skin shit, okay? They're Marduk, bro. That's they were on to some shit, those Mesopotamians. I'll tell you what. They really were, dog. What's up with that? What's up with that? That was also, Mesopotamia is like, I think in, Where like, is that? I think it's what like that? Jerusalem area. I think it's like. Africa? Jerusalem? Yeah. Or like in the Middle East. Oh. Yeah. I'm not sure. Where is this? Like in Egypt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, but anyways. Mesopotamians. 3000 BC. Numbers were coming up a long time ago. They were using numbers. Modern mathematics was 1500 to 1700. Okay, so that's when we got the monocle on top hat. <laughs> like the 1600s, roughly. <laughs> Mr. Peanut take. math. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Monopoly man math. So that's probably when they were doing like ones and tens and shit, but they got medieval and early modern mathematics. I'm just talking about counting, though. It's such a crazy thing because we count years in tens, like 2002, like all that, but were they not counting years in that same way we counted years and then we just like translated the numbers yeah, like language? Guess, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, whenever we were before we started, like when did the, when did we start recording things? <laughs> when, <laughs> when did we? How old is this thing? Run for this real? shit past back run it, me. Run it back. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I need to look at this film real quick. Like, because they were writing shit. Okay, so they're talking about. And where are you exactly right now? Uh, Within you know, Google. Um, this is Cambridge. Okay, so it's some shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> Shout out Cambridge. Medieval mathematics had uh, like a, 1,100 to 1,500 motherfuckers were doing math in the medieval times when there okay. were like castles and shit. Um, I guess they had to use like geometry and algebra and to like build. Yeah, to make like their structures. holds and shit, make catapults. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they were definitely doing math back then, which means they had to have numbers, I guess. How do you do math without having a number system, right? Yeah. How do you have math without double when... digits, triple digits? And adding the additional digit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google when was the number system developed because I, th- I think that's a more appropriate question. Isn't that a whole thing within Google, like the ability to Google the right thing to get you to the answer that you really oh, want? Oh, yeah. You got to know. That's a skill. <laughs> it is. It's a skill outside. You got to know how to use Google. Yeah. It's like some, some old people can't use Facebook. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine like some people don't know how to Google what they're looking for. Yeah. You, I gotta, you got to talk like a stupid person. Sometimes I'm the stupid person. I got to talk for me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> to explain things to a five-year-old. Dude, they said 40,000 years ago they were using glyphs to be able to represent. So this is what I'm talking about. Okay. They were in like Mesopotamia, they were using numbers 5,000 years ago, but like in Egypt, they were using numbers 40,000 years ago. They had to be using the numbers to get those damn pyramids. Got to be doing. I mean, fuck. Am I right? Fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> you think they're just throwing that up? You know what I'm saying? Uh, it looks good. It looks flush. 16th century, that's when our numbers got fucking invented and they also could do like fucking polynomials and imaginary numbers which is like irrational numbers which is like Like i yeah calculus and shit yeah in the 16th century hmm Hmm. sophisticated who invented one to ten numbers here we go okay let's go see i wouldn't have thought to google it like that (laughs) do you mean to ask these things dumbass yeah (laughs) Google's like uh, Hindu Arabic numerals, set of 10 symbols, 1 through 10, uh, that represent numbers in the decimal number system. They originated in India in the 6th or 7th century and were introduced to Europe throughout the writings of the Middle Eastern mathematics, especially the al Khwarizmi and the Al-Kindi, about the 12th century. Imagine teaching motherfuckers about math. <laughs> That's Bro, crazy. there's this shit I gotta show you. It's like showing, showing someone a new song or a post on me- <laughs> social media. You're like this math shit, though. Dude, this I'm shit telling bangs. you, it's funny. Like you need to <laughs> just watch it with me because it's gonna be funny. It's like, come on, man. I, I don't know about that number shit, bro. I don't know about all that. That's a lot. Of, I don't know. Like I like the numbers that I have. You know, I like the music that I listen to. I don't want to listen to this new shit. Mm. But no, this is gas. And then the number system that's been carrying us for 16th century, so like four or five hundred years. Is that how Long time. centuries work? 16th century is... The 1500s, roughly? Okay. See, numbers are fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. Fucking weird. But yeah, so I do think that adding the additional digit is like a sign. It's it's correct. because like Maybe that's why it lasted is because it's more true. More true to the in line with the universe, how the universe yeah. works in some fashion or form or fashion. I don't know. These are just thoughts that I have in my deep meditative states. Maybe it's like... As humanity, like we started making numbers and like even to us as humans, we're like, this doesn't, it's like we're missing something here. Like there should be a way to like, 
And then, like, it took however long it took for someone to be like, you would just fucking blah. And then you would blah. And then those, it would naturally be true still. It's like, oh, that's fire. Oh. <laughs> but, that's fire. <laughs> Yes. I feel like that's probably like we started with like we need numbers and then like I think there's like a natural gravitation towards like a better way to do things like yeah all the time I would hope so I like think I think so. that's the inspiration that we get is something outside of us saying like I know a better way like I know the right way something to do that something can be better yeah mm-hmm. yeah absolutely it's crazy going to a 10th birthday today so I think 10th <laughs> birthdays it's like a yeah it's like elevated it's like okay Shit, here you go. This is the last one to get to 100. Yeah, really. Because that's the other thing is you go from 1 to 10, and then 10 to 100 is a lot bigger jump. Big old jump. Big old jump. Skish. Do you think There's that's... a lot of little little seasons, I think, in between that. It'd be fun to tell like Jazz. Every four years, maybe, or something like that. <laughs> that's super true. That there's like, yeah. But it'd be fun to tell her that life is like, like as fast as 1 through 10 went, that's how fast 11 through 99 goes as well. Like when you, <laughs> yeah. when you turn 10, every 10 years goes as fast as one year because that would just be so scary if she could conceptualize that. My dad fucked with me like that. I don't, I don't think we should fuck with her like that, but like my dad somewhere thinks that's funny. I'm sure. Just some retrospect for you. It does get to where time travels faster as you get older. That is true. Years feel so much less, not taxing, but I don't feel the year, the same duration that a year felt Eight, eight, nine years ago, ten years ago. No way. No way. No way. Not even close. Years be flying by now. Real quick. I'm like, she's just like already about to be April, bro. We're like, the first quarter's done. What about the first, the first quarter's about to be ending buzzer beater today? I remember going to her birthday last year. Mm. Isn't that crazy? I was like, oh, yeah. None of the year went by. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. That startled me. That's 365 days. Like, on the board. You can't get... On the board. You can't get those back, dog. Spent. It's hard to even say. You can't get... I can't do it. I never go back. Hey, you can't go back. Hey. <laughs> nah. One time my dad told me when I was a kid that I used to have a sister, but like it didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> Just to fuck with me, dude. <laughs> but it didn't work out. <laughs> we had to send her away. <laughs> she tested me. She was like, she tried me. <laughs> she tried me. I never tried me. We just weren't like a good match, you know? I was like, oh my God, do you guys like me? (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) It's so fucked up. But sometimes when I think about being like a father figure, an adult figure, I think about like ways to like bend the walls of reality for like your kid in a moment. It's like, because you know they don't know shit. (laughs) You could bend these walls. Yeah, kind of be, be a psychedelic for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very malleable. Yeah. Just pl- play with perception. Yes. Yes. So yeah. That's cool. Birthday I, day. I feel like culture, Party too. Day. Just double digits. We're always... I remember being nine and being like, double digits, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm being ridiculous today. I'll hem it up. I'll hem it up. There's some mom saying, why the fuck? Probably not that. It's because I watched a ton of um, Kill Tony this week, to be honest oh, with you. Yeah. I think it kind of like blurred out my filter for our family fun Cursing. programming <laughs> podcast. But but yeah, Kill Tony is an amazing show. It's probably my favorite thing on YouTube okay, that I've found is, of What late. is Kill Tony? Explain that. Kill Tony is a live comedy show based out of Austin, Texas. And what shout they, out Austin. Shout out Austin for just blowing up. The glow so, up is. So Joey Rogue is in there and Kill Tony is in Austin as well. Yes. Crazy. And the likes of... Um, like Shane Gillis, I think, lives there. He's there all the time. Um, Roseanne li- lives in Austin. She's there all the time. Red Band also runs the show with Tony. He lives in Pflugerville, so he's there all the time. Uh, Duncan Trussell lives there, so he's there a lot. Um, Crazy. Yeah, Dave Chappelle comes through all the time. I don't even want to tell y'all because <laughs> <laughs> ticket prices are going to go up. We're going to go. We need to go. Yeah, we're trying we to go hopefully go. very soon and yeah. give Maybe you a feedback. Okay, yeah. I would love to go next week. I'm just so down. I'm so down. It'd be fun. S- so... Kill Tony is a show that happens not at the. I guess we're trying to go to Kill Tony, or because I guess Kill Tony is its own venue. It's, it's on it, Mondays. Does it happen at the Comedy Mothership? I think the last one was at Comedy Mothership because it's open now. Okay, so I, yeah, Comedy Mothership is the club that Joe Rogan owns, and then Kill Tony is just like a separate show. Yes. Okay, but they, they do their show in that place in that club. 
Yes. So yeah, Kill Tony started in California when that's where, where they all lived out there, and okay. they just do like a night of the week at a local comedy club, and then perform their show like on their stage. But their show is kind of like Saturday Night Live mixed with American Idol. So what they do is everyone that wants to like they're a grinding comedian and they want a chance. Comedians to, only come up who are yeah looking for a spot, looking for a, an open mic more or less, and they maybe get wanting a, a chance to impress. Some famous comedians. Some famous comedians. Yeah, yeah some, some, some big names. Exactly. Get some coaches, get some, like, honest feedback. feedback. Yeah. yeah. So they draw the names out of the hat, but they also mix it in with, like, regulars. And so they'll, someone's, like, good and they've been coming for, like, six or seven weeks and everyone's been sucking that night. They'll, like, be like, uh, Hans Kim, can you please come up and give us something worth watching for a little bit? Because this show's been terrible so far. Because <laughs> sometimes the people are not great. Like, it's like American Idol. Sometimes they're terrible singers. Yeah. Genuinely. But what's fun about the show is they get 60 seconds of their set they get to do it they can bomb if they bomb it's cool one minute but then afterwards they have to get interviewed by tony and the panel and tony's a good enough comedian that he can make someone who's not interesting he can at least make fun of them and it'll be funny (laughs) but nice uh he's good enough that the show is interesting regardless of who they bring up and it's kind of like a nice way to mix in some cosmic randomness to allow some opportunity for chance to bring people i don't know it's cool seeing who goes up there and like this one girl went up and she'd been th- she'd been up three times and every time her name got called, Joe Rogan was there. Really? And yeah. It's just like what are the odds of that? Lucky. It's just some shit. Enough. You know what I'm saying? Some. Was she okay? She. I thought she wasn't great the third time. I guess I watched her on her third time and I was like, <clears throat> it sucks that you're not better. Oh. But like I don't. I think that about everybody. I don't know. I just was like, you didn't get passed. I wish you would have crushed. I wish you would have crushed. It. You know. Uh-huh. And. uh but yeah, I think it's for people that are kind of like working and then they're hoping to find like starlets or natural talents or people who are kind of at that place where they could use a mentorship. And so that part's really cool because it's like giving back to the culture and the community to yeah. build local art and stuff like that. Absolutely. Like I really fuck with, I really respect what it's about in yeah. that sense, in that nature. Uh, and I, and I want to support that. But then also it's great because it's like Saturday Night Live. They have a live band there and the live band like plays music like like saturday night live's band does like when people are walking out uh-huh. or like if someone is like in a rant and they're like i'm never going back Burr. you don't know where i'm from Burr. and they'll like play to like what they're doing uh-huh. and if anybody's like well i know i kind of bombed but and they're like is anything interesting about you be like oh i've been a singer for six years and they're like well can you what's your best karaoke song we'll we'll have the band play it right now and you can sing it with them that's tight and they're like just just start singing they'll pick up after you like they're good like really good live band so nice. the, the overall production of the show is like incredible that's cool yeah it's it's that's super cool super worth watching on youtube i think if you're bored on youtube or bored of youtube like my dad's he's the, for him he's like i've seen all the seasons of youtube <laughs> Um, oh, you too. <laughs> but Kill Tony There's is... There's so t- much out there. There's so much out there. <laughs> There's a lot, but it's also like tropical stuff. You can run out of Dude Perfect or like... But, yeah. Whatever the so That's, much is, you know what I'm saying? 100%. I've, I've heard all the hip hop, you yeah. know? <laughs> but What's going on? Kill Tony is amazing and there's a bunch of episodes and it happens live in Austin, Texas, which is incredible. So. That's so cool. That's so, yeah. Right up the road. Yeah. Those dirty comedians... <laughs> influencing me in my podcasting <laughs> nature i've got to back off nah it's all good it's i want to go i want to i want to go perform yes. on the stage and i would love to. i want to kill tony i want to see i want to yes i would love that it's crazy or i guess i don't really have i guess ambitions to be per se oh like a stand-up comedian but i i could i i love that art i like i like that art form i think it's a, a fun medium to express your truth and your perspective and your story and things that you've learned like and make light of things as well. I think com- or like laughter is. That's awesome. the thing. It's Laughter's so amazing. much bigger than just like being a comedian. Mm-hmm. But and I think comedy is bigger than music in that sense, maybe. But just in the sense, like your your kid kind of needs you to be able to make light of a situation, probably in their life, or like your partner would like it if you could make them laugh. Like if you could find the humor in something and then like deliver in a way that you know like the audience is going to like think it's funny because you know them. Mm -hmm. That's like connection in a sense. And I think that like some things need to be dealt with like lightheartedly, like 
unfortunately for me because i wish i could just like march on lynch my way through it i wish because it, <laughs> it'd be only because it'd be nice if there was one answer yeah, there's like there's only one tool you needed the fix all tool it's all you need the army swiss, or swiss army knife yeah it. it'll fix everything it's like just get your trucking stat up higher mm. but no you have to, sometimes you just like a diff, you gotta be able to be lighthearted too mm-hmm. and I don't know if we need everybody to be able to be a musician, right? I don't know if it's like, in that sense, it's the same as we kind of want everybody to be able to see the funny in something. Yeah. Have a sense of humor. Yeah. There's like a general, because sense of humor is very broad. Everyone has their own sense of humor. But like within the idea, like they have a sense of humor though. Like they <laughs> they laugh at something. Yeah. But every, yeah, within that, it gets very different. <laughs> yep. But there is there are things that are just funny. The other th- yeah, that's true. You can't right. help it. Like, Jordan Peterson talks about that. What is he talking about? Uh, I guess this... Because uh, I was thinking about Jordan Peterson, too, how right. he talks about towing the line of, like, what is, like, okay to say is sometimes the most, like, gripping... Like, that's his root of comedy. It's like, oh, he's towing right on the line of calling that thing out. He might call him out. Oh, he called him out. Yeah. He's going to get in trouble. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, that 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 thing is, like, important because it represents, like, what the court jester did to balance out, like, the king in culture of, like, medieval times, which was, like, if the king was so tyrannical that like he couldn't take a joke from the jester then like the people wouldn't really be rocking with him but like if the court if the king could like be like a good ruler and still handle like the jester which represented like the criticism of the community Mm -hmm. and he could like have a relationship with the criticism of the community and there was balance in that then like the community could trust the king yeah and like that is a relationship yeah and that thing i think it was represented in just like it's a metaphor for the fact that we all have to be able to have a sense of humor and have mm-hmm. a balance between a, a ruling king and a relationship with the comedic criticism mm-hmm. of what's going on right now. Yeah, yeah. And I guess, yeah, There, I love that because, like, the, the, the jester analogies, I guess, referring to the idea that you can, uh, I guess you can point out the flaws in someone, but do it in a way that it's, like, funny, and you can, like, deliver the truth in a more, uh, a, pretty bo- a prettier box, a more well-wrapped present. It's like, oh, I do do that. I do do that. That's the okay. I see what you're saying. I see. I see the. I see the strife I'm creating with my actions and habits. My bad dog. That's all me. <laughs> That's like optimal outcome A. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. Great king. Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. I love that guy. Great king. That guy's going places. Four more years. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I think uh, that's exactly how we all want to be. But it's it's hard to take criticism. It's hard to self reflect or mm-hmm. to not be so self conscious that you can't like understand what's happening and not just be like emotionally charged by the situation. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Be more objective, dude. The further out your bird's eye view is, the more you expand. Like the bigger you can be. Mm-hmm. If you could just see it from like the nobody perspective just the what literally is happening perspective based on all the other literal things that have happened perspective. Like your energy is free floating drone cam. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, I try to think about that all the time. I try to be like that. Yeah. Out out there with it. It feels like there's a camera on you at all times. That's, that's why integrity is what do you do when nobody's watching? It's really like, what are you doing when only existence is watching you? Yeah. Like your most truest, more or less form. I think that's facts. There's the birthday girl. Uh oh. Big thanks, Poppy. Little thanks, stop it. Elevation. <laughs> Embodied. Double digit, Poppy. Personified. Little digit, stop it. Hey. Balling like a balling and, and we moving not an optional. Do it, yeah, do it. I wasn't ready to freestyle. I was, nah, just, yeah, I was just in the moment. Nah, yeah. <laughs> There's a time and place. There's a time and place. Everybody would like it if I freestyled when they saw me. And if yeah. I and if I dropped a song in between the last time we talked, <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. I want to get to the point in life to where that is my life. Where yeah, doing that I hate being the artist that like has to be like, look, these things take time. But like, unfortunately, it t- it just does take time. Like, I'm not even making an excuse. It's a, I'm more complaining to you. Like, it's annoying how much these things take time. Yeah, it takes time, when, especially when you need the middleman. But that's why I'm why I'm happy we have the podcast. To another degree, yeah. too. Yes. So yeah, it gives us that's a, taking up some more focus, and this is right here for you. I love it. I love it. It's more. Yeah, it's, it's more content. I love the type of content. I love the ability to just be open. Be open. Yeah. Th- this is us. We're just talking. This, this is be, us. This is us. This is us to, to the full. So whenever you listen to our songs, this is who we listening to. 
Yeah, I think it does help with that a lot. Because I would love to listen to a Childish Gambino or a Big Sean podcast growing up. We did. That would have been my chit. Yeah. My chit. We had to build our perspective of what he was based on his interviews. And I think it's nice uh, that we give people the ability to build their perspective on who we are just like anytime they want. It's just like, come talk to me. Mm. Or in this instance, it's like, come listen to my podcast, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we're here for it. We're here for it. So yeah, Kill Tony though. Kill Tony's great. And, awesome. and we're going to try to go. And if we get on, we'll post the links. Even if we bomb, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be the best. I can't but, wait. But even if we don't do the Kill Tony, it'd be cool to go. And also, I do definitely want to go to the Comedy Mothership to do the Joe Rogan. Or I guess see whoever he brings out. Because they're bringing out like a whole bunch of people. Andrew Schultz, Ron White. That's another one I want to say. He's right? there all the you time. Know? Like It's crazy. Like yeah. He's bringing out some big name comedians. Like I think this is like a... The biggest club in the world right now, as far as comedy goes. At least right now. And it's right down the road. Right over there. Just like... Pew. Yeah. I'm, I'm really more interested in just going to the comedy mothership because of the cultural relevance that I think it... The cultural significance that I think it has right now. Mm-hmm. And then... Yeah, absolutely. Kill Tony's just a bonus. I want to go get in the rotation of doing... I just think you'd crush. Jamie Foxx looking ass. It'd be fun. <laughs> We need, we, but the, I guess I was alluding to that earlier because I don't really aspire to be a stand-up comedian per se. I definitely want to be a rapper. I am a rapper. I definitely want to be a podcaster. I am a podcaster. But I'm not, I, I think if I did step into it and wear that role, I think I could, I could come up with some bits and like write down some material. This guy is but, like the funniest person I know. Like you make me laugh. You're funny. Thanks, dog. People are going to the yeah. It's so tough because I I, I need to organize it though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's the that's the art of stand-up comedy is organizing it. People are like, oh, I, I freestyle. I rap. It's like, well. Come on, can you make a banger? True. Okay. Like, can you rain dance your way into a banger? Like, can you rain dance your way into an hour set that kills? True. You know? It do be like that. People, everyone yeah. wants to say they rap. Mm-hmm. I'm like, my dog, wicked funny, dog. He wicked smart. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no. It, it, as an artist, when someone says they rap, if I'm having a crazy day, I'm like, bitch, fucking show me, show me the Carfax. Where's set? Where's your music? Where have you performed? But it's just like, yeah, we're the same way. Mm. No sets. <laughs> Zero no sets on you. Zero sets. Zero practice, but I'm sure if I wrote something down and tried to try to give it give it a go, give it the old college try, <laughs> I might come out with something decent. Thank you. That's true for anybody. Right? It's supernaturally, you have Jamie Fox syndrome though, like childish Gambino <laughs> issues. Like I think you're made Donald for this because you're a writer. You write all the time. Or well, we I don't even think we write as much as we should. But like Jay Z doesn't either. But like I think I'm gonna yeah I'm, I'm a really good observer of life. I think because I think being funny is the identification of the funny thing you're not really funny per se you're just good at identifying what the funny thing would be in like the people who have a sense of humor <laughs> yes that's the joke that was yeah, that like, was the, the joke humor, good like, nice man, job right there yeah it's like that mm-hmm. i feel that that's too the funny thing to say so it's not yeah i guess but there is the organization of like writing it down per se or, and there's the nuance there's like a uh, whole thing even better ways to say what is the funny. Sometimes all the funny people know the funny thing. And then the funnier mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. are taking a moment to see if they can work. Where, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where can I make this? Where can I take this? How can I go a little bit deeper or a little different perspective? Yeah. And then a rook might just like say the obviously funny thing. Uh-huh. And then all the nuanced funny people are like, yeah, of course. Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> so there's levels and layers. Yeah. 100%. I mean, to everything, 100%. you know. 100%. I want to get you in there. Yeah. I would, I'd be, be like, Austin, Texas, how we doing tonight? <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Isn't oral sex just like the best? Just like ever? <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I should rephrase. Re- receiving oral sex is the best. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> Re- <laughs> And I can just go off of that for a minute. <laughs> Yo, oh my god. I just I almost wish you hadn't told me. I wish I could have just been there live. That's so funny. I mean, it's like not. And like part of the funny thing is just like the the, the switch immediately from the excellent to excellent. Isn't oral sex just amazing? <laughs> what would you do? What oh would shit, you... what did he say? <laughs> what would you do if it was crickets the right words. there though? If it was just like oh, I would just keep going. And then I would be like, let me rephrase, let me rephrase. Receiving oral sex is amazing. <laughs> okay. Is there anyone like, who, who you know who like doesn't? It's like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I don't really. And not, not like in the way of like, I'm trying to be nice to you, babe. Or like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, nah, you're good. Because you're good. <laughs> you know what's work. 
<laughs> Yo, I'm about to walk out of here. He's got it. He's got it. Yes. Yes. That's Fucking <laughs> yes. Fucking yes, dog. Oh, man. That's funny. 60 seconds. <laughs> I love how, like here's another thing is like, that's not even funny or like it is funny, but it's not even funny. It's not like a clever joke. It's not like well-written or like elaborate. You didn't set me up. You didn't, yeah. you didn't dress me down. You know, like it's just, you hit him with the bloop, bloop. You can empathy with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the quick misdirection is like the, the, like the, the jolt. And then like, it's a relatable thing as well. That's, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that was going to be my next part. Like, it's like, who doesn't? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> okay. Now here's another, how we could develop that bit is put in a metaphor right there for like, um. Mm-hmm. Do you know anybody that's like, oh, I'm intermittent fasting right now, or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm outside of my my window for receiving blowjobs. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, nobody's like that, or or something. Exactly. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. yeah, we could just like work on the bit. I love that. Or... See, yeah, there's the art of comedy. Because <laughs> we can just say funny things, so yeah. we have to like construct them and like make a song out of it. We can just say hard bars, but you need to like but, build it with the beat and like or build tell the story or like. Paint a better picture. Ah, Give me like, exposition. I'll loop yeah, yourself or whatever. You know, yes. all that kind of shit with, within comedy and art. All of that is expression. But but, but we've been writing though. That's the thing is yes. that I don't think that there's some people that are trying to get funny maybe or like develop that funny trait or the better observer trait or whatever you want to call it. And then there's people mm-hmm. that need to work on the writing too. But you've been doing all that for so long, so that's why. Yeah, we've been doing that for a minute. We've been doing this. So I'm confident in my dog. Your journey. You know, Create a jersey. Funny. <laughs> Feels like create a Jersey Day. Create a Jersey Day, baby. Yes. What up, Jersey? Where are Jersey, bro? I love it. Yeah, what a Jersey represents. I it's also like, I fuck with this guy. Yeah. This guy right here. There's a lot of guys I could fuck with, but I fuck with this one. Uh, yeah, or in this sense, like I fuck with this guy represents. Like yes. this guy represents exactly. the dunking so hard that mo- like iconic dunking. They want to find me. <laughs> yeah, dunk, dunk so hard they got a 800 k for me on yeah. the next p- the payday. Yes. Or, like, also Drake, too. Like, Drake has a bar. He's like, uh, Gabby, what's that Drake bar? <laughs> There's a lot of Drake bars. About Vince Carter. I was on that. You just, you just said. Um, I, I, Vince I just Carter, said, arm in the hoop I shit. Yeah. When that, he was between the legs, whole arm in the hoop shit. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it represents Drizzy to me. And it's mm-hmm. Raptors. It's like, that's another thing about a jersey is, like, it can kind of, like, be, like, like Peyton Manning, what does he represent? You know, he, he represents like a hometown hero, like a, mm. like the sheriff, like first in, last out, like uh, drinking a cup of scotch after a win. <laughs> you know, some Glenn Fittich, yeah, twenty five, <laughs> yeah, talking like I don't know, just like class. That's what it was. It was okay. a, he was like a classy winner, yeah, like a real sportsman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not and, extra flashy, not extra braggadocious or anything. Just come get the job done. Yep, good game. Good game. Let's go have good game. Glass of Glenn Fittich or whatever the yeah. fuck you drink. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Enjoy, wear some suits. Look nice. Yeah, I heard he wore a suit into like. All of the OTAs and two days in practice, he was always wearing like a jacket and like bringing in a briefcase. He's like, I'm coming to fucking work, bitches. And then Derek. I mean business. <laughs> Derek... I mean business. <laughs> I look business. I am business. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. Yeah, exactly, man. And then Derek Wolf was that. like, I came up with the D line. We were wearing like slides and like. Slides and sweats. joggers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we were coming in there to lift weights and shit. Like, he was there for business. <laughs> business only bro let's go paint manning shout out the sheriff so yeah i think that like his jersey kind of represents that to me um mm-hmm. and like andrew luck's jersey represents like a shooting star something you wish didn't die so quick <sighs> they could have watched a little longer damn breaks my heart you know breaks indianapolis colts fans hearts but yeah we empathize with you he empathizes more so for <laughs> all that to say jerseys are dope because i think people wear your jersey or that's where like the metaphor kind of has like taken me in my life now yeah, it's like there's a lot of people that rock with MJ38, mm-hmm. and like if you ask a lot of our friends who the best rap duo in San Antonio is, they'll tell you us just because they love us. Like they wear our jersey. Yeah, they they see us practice. Like we're the people that they watch, and they like we get talked about in their watering hole. So they like yeah, they put on for us. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I feel like I'm in the field of like my life, and I should be watching Life of Pi, and I'm not watching Life of Pi, <laughs> and I'm like all oh, those people wearing my jersey are just like. Matthew's definitely gonna watch Life of Pi. Like I know him. He says he's gonna do something. He'll do it. He does it, bro. Like you can trust him. I'm like I wear his jersey, dog. <laughs> like, and then I had to come on the podcast and be like, and like I miss the game winning <laughs> shot. Sometimes Kobe misses the game winning shot, but I want the guard to take it every time. True that. 
True that. And most of the time, you know, also we take it hard. We like you need to you need to miss game winning shots. Like there's like a certain number you probably have to miss so you can become level ninety nine shooting. Mm. It's probably like thirty three missed game winning shots, but you could make that thirty three hundred if you don't like learn properly from the the thirty three. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I feel like yeah, we do a good job. I'll watch Life of Pi. <laughs> In, in and of itself, it's a good movie, just on its own, not even in regards to like trying to watch it with the podcast. But it's like, I would, it's, it's a dope movie. It'd be fun to break it down. It's about, yeah. Yeah. It's, I wouldn't say it's like a religious movie per se, but there's a, like the premise of the movie is like, uh, I'm, like this guy has a story that'll make you believe in God. Religious overtones? Yeah. That's like, like the yeah. story. Okay. Over the, the premise. That's, that's, the, that's the premise. Yeah. And he's like, let me tell you my story. Oh, shit. Yeah. Shit, crazy story. Damn, I didn't know that's what we were asking people to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. I'm in there. I'm in it's there. It's a good movie. And yeah, I'll be wearing your jersey. Keep wearing our jersey. Yes. I love you guys. Hopefully we'll make little jerseys for you one day. Yes, man. Yeah, I have like uh, people on the line or people at work just like, man, I want to see you on MTV. It's like, you will, man. You will. I mean, I don't really watch MTV. What? The, yeah, I mean, neither. <laughs> <laughs> duh. But, duh, but, Matthew. The idea. The idea that is so true. Yeah. Idea. I want to be on Fast 22. What? Fast and Furious 22. Okay. I want to be, fast, I want to be like... Fast 22. What are they on now? 10, I think. Oh, God. They say it's going to be the last one. 10? Yeah. The finale? Yeah. Okay. 10. <laughs> oh, the shit. The magic number. <laughs> Damn. Fast 10. Okay. I think that's... I've only seen. I, God, they, they went. They went. They, they lost me in that one. The problem was they, they made so many of those movies, bro. They lost me. The Fast and Furious one, Fast and Furious two. I was in. I loved it so so much. And then like three, four, five, and well, you know, I was gone. I was gone. I can remember one. I can remember two, because it's like, and I can remember Tokyo Drift. Three was Tokyo Drift. I think. I'm pretty sure. But I can't really remember what's going on after that. I think I've no, seen I four can. and five. I know I've seen one of the more recent ones, or maybe like five or six. Maybe that's a recent one. <laughs> there's one where there's, there's a plane. Ten. It's Jesus ridiculous. God. <laughs> Those writers are out of hand. Out of hand, man. I wonder how much money they made off that. So much. It's but they also so got to pay a lot of people. They got to pay The Rock. I'm sure he's in, he, right? he's in that. Fuck, you're right. They got to pay some a ton of superstars. Vin Diesel, yeah, they got to pay some people for those. Jason Statham was in those movies. It must be worth it. Jason though, Momoa was in this movie. Jason Momoa went in that. I think he's a bad guy for this one. I could be mistaken. Nah, he seems like the kind of guy that gets in there. The guy from Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, Colin Controgo. That guy's got a fucking life. Am I right? He went off. <laughs> he went off. Game dude. of Thrones and then just pew, 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 Aquaman and shit. You can do anything. He's popping. Now. He's popping. It was cool to watch him be Colin Drogo. Then again, you know, no, he's like, I'm like, oh, that's one of my dogs. I was rooting for you. Let's Pretty go. Cool. Childish Gambino's like that too. Yeah, love that guy. Like rooting for that guy. Now he has Atlanta, that great show, and he. Has, I think he is on another another show or something. I'm not 100 percent sure. I think he's doing another creative endeavor. I'm not. Sure. I think he still is doing Atlanta, but I think he's doing another show as well or something like that. I that could be wrong. That's believable. Yeah, I think he might be teaming it, doing it with somebody else. I'm sure he is. Cause... Rooting, rooting for that man. Rooting for that man since EP. Yeah. Since EP, since I saw him on Derek Comedy on YouTube. Yeah, I gave a speech in Communications 101 that was like, Donald Glover is the most talented man in Hollywood because he'd be doing some shit y'all don't even know, dog. And then I was like, he raps, and then he acts, and then... Uh, what else did he do? Just comedy? Yeah, I guess it was did stand-up comedy because we had just seen him do stand-up too. Yeah. And then... Yeah, he wrote for 30 Rock, was in Community, was a rapper the whole time, stand-up comedian. Yeah, I think I did writing for... 30 Rock under the comedy section as well as like stand-up p- touring and then talked about like acting as its own whole thing. Because mm-hmm. it is its own whole fucking thing. Yeah. It's hard to act. Yeah. You have to be like, whew, whew, I'm sad. I'm fucking sad. Channel, like, channel, channel, <laughs> channel, 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 channel. <laughs> express emotion. Express emotion. Yeah, for real. That I'm not like, really feeling right now. I need to feel that. I need to channel myself into that emotion. I'm a big man. I'm a big man. I'm tired. You're a bitch, bro. <laughs> that would be like, and they'll be like, okay, let's get you ready. ready. Action. And that's like acting. You got to do that shit. Uh-huh. So like, yeah, I respect. But then it's like, why would you fucking write a paper? I think I thought it was easy because I thought he does three things. It's got to be three paragraphs. But like. I think I was interested in the fact that he wanted to do so many things yeah. because I think we got That's crazy. podcast music. Stand up. St- I, I don't know. Because this is stand up to a degree sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we're like. Off the top here. Yeah. And sometimes we just go into saying shit because it's funny, not because it's like, I want truth I want to portray to you, you know? Yeah. Identifying the funny thing. I love doing that. That's Laughter is important in life. 
You need that shit, I think. Because at the time, it's so grating sometimes, bro. And then yes. there's also like everyone loves to laugh and everyone likes to make people laugh. I think people can get mm. kind of intoxicated with that. Just like saying outlandish shit just to get a pop. It's like you're fucking annoying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you're getting a pop here, but like you're doing it in such like a Some just, people are good just... at stealing pops too. Mm. Like they they can force a laugh based on like physiological human language like connection barriers, like stuff that you just naturally like If I'm just like ha 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 ha! Like a lot of times, people will be like ha ha. Like it's like a rhythm that goes on there. Okay. And it's like I've seen. You got me. <laughs> you got a chuckle out of me. <laughs> it's like something about your physiological nature is like I laugh here. Uh, it's like if you watch a show, if you go to a Spanish comedy show, like you will laugh with the audience because you just like feel the like the timing of the punchline, and your brain's like, I'm with you guys. I'm with you. I saw that. I saw it too. But like, it's, even if you don't understand the language, yeah, it's a, or at least I heard that from Louis C.K. because he said that he would go watch shows in like other languages uh-huh. with his girlfriend who could speak those languages, okay. and then he would find himself just like being in the audience even though he couldn't. He had no clue Truly what the fuck they were saying. Fully, yeah. fully, exactly. He could still be encapsulated best. and be like, she's going in, she's setting it up, she's setting it up. Oh shit, they, that was funny. Or like, and then it got to a point where he was just like laughing, but like. Not even, yeah, no clue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It is contagious. It's, it's a real thing for sure. It's, it's in your physiology, I think, is what you were just saying. Yeah, I couldn't get to that word the first time I was trying to. Show. Some people tap into just your physiology. I've seen it at tables too. It's like, I, it's e- sometimes you could make someone agree with you or make someone want to buy something from you, even though, like, it's just, it's like a physiological response. It's not like true free will. It's not like, let me think about that. That is what I want to do right now. It's like, that's not what's going on. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have to do that with these comedians and be like, is this funny? This isn't funny at all. This is if I don't I don't like the premise I don't like the setup you sound like a dick <laughs> <laughs> and then it hops back into like <laughs> and then I just like yeah but then I laugh because I want to be a more lighthearted person <laughs> <laughs> just go along <laughs> wait 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 I object I object to this entire thing stop stop <laughs> stop <laughs> cease give me the floor let me explain why. <laughs> You don't want to do that. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you have to. No, I'm the, I no. Sometimes I want to and I don't have to. That's okay. the thing. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to be. But sometimes you do have to. And yeah, it's good to have yeah. that skill set to be able to disagree. Mm. Both are true. But it's laughing along. Yeah. Having that. Because sometimes, like, you have dreams of playing in Madison Square Garden, right? That'd be awesome. But, like, sometimes, like, telling a joke out of watering hole is, like, the max audience anyone's ever going to have. So it's like, why? If he's bombing, like, why am I going to fucking... Bro, you're bombing. Shut the fuck up around my watering hole. How about you get the fuck off the mic when you come around here? You are now the critique at the watering hole. You do not speak unless spoken to at the watering hole. Okay? You've been bracketed into audience member from henceforth, sir. We can banish you if you want. How does the excommunication sound? Society's harsh. Yeah. yeah. Well, because there's well, there's crazy people, right? For sure. Maybe crazy people in the past were a lot more dangerous. Two percent of psychos out there. I think for the most part, the crazy people are kind of like, just leave me alone nowadays. But maybe in the past, crazy people were like, I'm taking everything they have. I'm taking it all. I'm taking all of your shit. <laughs> and it was like harder to protect yourself because you were just in a tent. Fuck God knows, bro. Yeah, those two percent of crazy people, like back in Firestone Cave times, mm. might have been like a lot more alarming. You know, it's like 20 of us and like four of us are fucking nuts. <laughs> I don't think those numbers are right. <laughs> There's a hundred of us. Two of us are fucking bad shit. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was like 25%, 20%. 20, 20% of people were apeshit crazy. <laughs> That'd be harder to deal with. Oh my God. That'd be harder to deal with. Who knows, man? Well, in certain sections of society, too, they... Do you want, a, do you want like, a crazy, probably scary stat? It's like, how many people are in, like, insane asylums? What's yeah. the insane asylum population? All right, give me some filler. Good. <laughs> We're going to Google that. Brought to you by the Insane <laughs> Asylum, Shutter Island, Leonardo DiCaprio. If you've never seen it, another great movie. No homework assignment on that one. That's extra credit if you want. That was a funny movie. That was great a, movie. I remember watching the movie the very first time. At the very end, I was like, what the hell? And then I got a pop in the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> it was a great moment in my life. I was like 15. I was like, nice, I'm holding on to that one. I'm holding on to that one. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so funny! Oh, oh my god! Shutter Island. <sighs> yeah, if you ever like, if if the word like uh, uh, M Night Shyamalan esque, it's like an M Night Shyamalan esque movie. It's really good. It's a good movie. Um, dude, this is a crazy fucking stat. This one says the percentage of people with severe mental illness in prisons and jails is like, oh wait, hold on. It oh says sixteen percent of the total population. Sixteen percent of the total population. I was wondering if that was a percentage of people that were in jail. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. It was re- reference to the yeah, just jail population or general human population. Yeah, it could have been a misleading. Is it sixteen percent? That's a lot of motherfuckers. There's like over seven billion of us now, right? Yeah, sixteen percent of seven billion. That's a lot of crazy people. That's probably Americans, which is like what three hundred thousand, three three million, three hundred million. Yeah, three hundred and I know it's three and a lot of zeros. Three hundred eighty million, I think. There people. it is. Roughly, give it take. How many people? One hundred and fifty thousands by nineteen oh four. That's like an old stat. Nineteen oh four. Good God! How I mean, many people so did you say? One hundred and fifty thousand. That's a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I guess over three point eight million. But I was also projecting a decline in the amount of people that were there. Okay, this one says one hundred thousand people as of twenty twenty two. So we kept we kept around a hundred thousand. Damn! In nineteen fifty five, we had five hundred fifty eight thousand patients just in fucking America, dog. Half a million people. Jeez, bro. I guess I guess that also constitutes what are you de- de- defining as mental illness? People, right? yeah, you know, it's like, like dementia. Yeah, yeah, they're old. <laughs> Who knows, man? And, uh, There's a show about just that. Give on some psychedelics. Oh God! You imagine it's multi mega vitamins. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it might. I, I don't know, bro. I think one thing that's kind of scary to think about is like you think someone builds like a whole like shell of a perception of bullshit that they think life is about, and this big fucking sixty years of a lie they've been living, and then they like take a vitamin that tells them that they should burn all of that away and be them, truly them, like. Some people are too pot committed. I think they'd rather just lose their money. They're... No, I'll call. I uh, I will call. I'll call. I'm all in. Two seven. <laughs> Two seven unsuited. I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, yeah, I don't know about 1950s. Well, I don't. Even, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what culture was like in the 50s or like crazy. Yeah, a little different. A little bit the same, but a little different. The Fargo kind of puts me there. Makes me feel like culture. Maybe that's just Mad culture. Men. And Fargo, Mad Madman, right? Madman puts me in the 60s and 70s. Right, the sixties is that the primary? I think it's sixties, yeah. Right, yeah. And I guess it talks about Don Draper growing up, and then I guess if he's like as an adult in the sixties, it talks about when he was growing up and his his dad and, and like the the teens. And you're watching the teens. like <laughs> these ruddy ass fucking bicycles and like a lot of baseball bats and shit. Guys wearing overalls. It's fucking weird, bro. <laughs> fucking diff. <laughs> fucking diff. It's like our culture. <laughs> Fucking diff. Yeah, we're in such a different time now. It's like crazy to me. It's all like social media and shit. Yeah, I wouldn't say more sophisticated per se, because I don't know. There's a lot of dumb shit out there. But we, it, more it, technological it based. Definitely technologically advanced. Yeah, we are super advanced in that regard. Yeah, in, refer- in, in reference to where we were even 30 years ago. Golly, that's crazy. 100 right? years ago, what the fuck? 200 years ago, oh my god, dude, mathematics. Well, even, years even 30 ago? years ago, I was like, what the fuck? Motherfuckers had like one of those things so they could do algebra. A fucking uh, abacus. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> He's crazy. Yeah, they would use abacuses and stuff. Fucking abacus. Speaking of numbers, <laughs> that's insane, dude. Yeah. Insanity. So yeah, time's crazy. Multivitamins make you think that. Yeah, it's a scary thought to think of, though. I'm not sure what brought us to that thought. <laughs> we're, <laughs> the, I think we're Shutter just Island groups talk. of people. I don't know. Oh, because we were talking about people being crazy within society. You have to watch out for those people back in the day when there was only a couple of us. Yeah, because I think we just have a predisposition to, like, scrape wheat from chaff. So it's like sometimes you want to be like, you're fucking not leading us in the right direction. Like, I think you have some other shit going on that's making you not do the best thing here. So, like, stop claiming you're doing the best thing for everybody because, like, that's some fuck shit. And, like, that that's something throughout history, like, has to happen. Like, king becomes tyrant. 
mm-hmm. and then like narrative or like protagonist needs to like say the truth. That's like a lot of stories. You know a what lot. I'm saying? That covers a good amount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that's like something throughout time. Like that'll never stop. I don't think that'll ever ever die. Yeah. 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 It's the truth. It's like the one of the uh, fundamental archetypical stories. So sometimes I get those wires crossed with people that are bullshitting at the watering hole. And I'm like, kill the tyrant. Kill the tyrant. And it's like, stop. You are now the critique. (laughs) (laughs) Shut the fuck up, guy. I I can see the snake in your heart. (laughs) It's fucked up. But like, that's how it gets sometimes. Oh, man. Well, kill Tony would be fun. Yes, I'm so ready. Jersey Day. Jersey Day. What do you think we should wear to kill Tony? Great question, right? (sighs) That is a good question. You don't want to be too serious. You don't want to come up in a jacket and a blazer. I've seen some people come close. It's not it. That's not it. I think I have the fit figured out. I would just wear something like this. Or it's like jeans, J's, and a shirt. Oh, if you walked up there like that, you'd have my attention, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be listening. Yo! <laughs> especially if you... This would be tight. Especially if you were like, who likes blowjobs? <laughs> no, no, no. Oral sex. Ladies, too. Ladies, too. <laughs> I was very clear, he's okay? Great. He's great. He's ready. This motherfucker's ready. We're ready. We'll come, we'll he's get, ready. <laughs> we'll get back. To, we'll get. We'll let y'all know how that goes. That'd be funny. Dude, Just no. one minute. It's all you need is one minute. I can do a minute. 60 seconds. Bro, you're going to get 10 seconds of laughter after that. So really? like, you really need 50 seconds. Yeah, man. Who loves bullshit? I almost didn't say it. <laughs> That's another thing you gotta learn, I think, as a comedian bone, is sometimes when your brain says, don't say that, that's like, put the pedal to the gas right then and just go for it. <laughs> the fuck else happened this week before we get off? I went to an MMA fight. Yes, you went to see, the, there was an MMA event here in San Antonio in our backyard. Dog. Right here. That's crazy. We're, I think we're a shitty crowd. Oh, God, that's not a great way to start this. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. 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 <laughs> I think as a city, we should take it as a responsibility to, like, be a really good crowd. Because in that moment, I could feel just, like, how much, like, the swell of the audience, like, kind of does play into the factor of what is, like, the fight. Yeah. Like, there was um, there was a lot of moments where you yeah, felt... Yeah, what defines a good crowd? Mm, there was moments where you felt... So, I didn't understand, like, fight crowd culture, but, like, I kind of was, like, picking up as on it as mm-hmm. I got there. There was, like, moments early in the fight where people were just yelling obscenities. Like, <laughs> screaming, like, ridiculous shit. Fuck like, you! Fuck you! I wish it was that directed. Damn. <laughs> Imagine people taking like <laughs> meme cliche jokes off of the internet and being like in public, like uh, copy paste spamming. Yeah, exactly. Just screaming it like twenty year olds. Uh, and also, like, yeah, you know, it's not a super sophisticated sport, so like, there's a lot of fans in there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah, people are screaming like, uh, you know, choke them out, or I meant. You know, whatever, whatever homoerotic stuff people be yelling. I meant to do something straight to them. You know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> people be like, let me think of something. Let me think of something. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't do it for you. But anyways, it made me be like, damn, San Antonio, what the fuck? We can't just be yelling like uh, a bunch of homophobic stuff while people are wrestling. Like, can we be a little better That's than that? That's not wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly oh um but then so then like but when the san, Anto- san antonio fighter came on there was like a shift in the energy like people were kind of like locked in and people were like really excited and like you could feel cool. like there's moments whenever like the fighter that's kind of the favorite of the crowd gets like momentum going people will be like yeah the crowd favorite or the uh like statistical favorite like the crowd favorite okay because like sometimes like if it's two people not from the city i realized it's kind of like up in the air who the crowd's gonna be like oh i want i fuck with that guy like you kind of decide when they walk out who's the bad guy and who's the good guy and it's based on like their swag their like demeanor their song like what they're fucking like representing in that moment you're like kick his ass kid Kick that fucking cocky motherfucker's ass. Whip his ass, bro. <laughs> or whatever. Whip his ass. He deserves it. Right? <laughs> you, know, you create a whole narrative. You, you do. Or like a whole I, backstory. I watched it happening all around like, me. Who's my Rocky Balboa? <laughs> who's my Rocky? Huh? <laughs> who am I fucking with? So uh, but there was a San Antonio fighter. And like there was a big swell and like support of like, yeah. And then like there was like moments where like he was in danger and he was kind of getting rocked. And the crowd got like dead silent. And then people would be like screaming like... Uh, you know, like, 
advice sometimes motivation. too yeah like motivation like stay in it or like you know uh keep space keep some space yeah. like get your head back screaming stuff like rock that. that pussy <laughs> rock his ass bro <laughs> yeah rock his ass <laughs> that was what would happen all night is what i'm trying to i couldn't find a good moment for it. <laughs> we just we did that as a crowd for like the first half hour i was there <laughs> and like that would get the pop in the room <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so for a while I was like, yo, like as a fighter, I'd not be like super stoked up. I'd be like nervous, like a kid in the lunch line, and then there's a bunch of bullies watching. <laughs> like, I'll take a grilled salad. Nothing too crazy today. <laughs> a grilled salad. <laughs> That's a good I fucked up. I fucked up. You didn't hear that. I said grilled chicken. He's <laughs> like, what do you want, kid? <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, but like so, so, but like the San Antonio fighter, he like bounced back, right? And then he, in the third, I think it was second or third round. Let's go. He's like fucking rocking the dude, going crazy, right? Mm. And then um, like the crowd is like, if they feel like you might get the the finish or you might get the tap, they try to like push you to that edge. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the dude takes like another shot, and he's like in worse shape. They'll be like standing up, being like, go. But like you also feel it's like, like get in the end zone, get in the end zone. Yeah, exactly. You're right there. But then sometimes like it's like a big shot, and then he gets on top of him, and then the guy like slips out, and then they're like, okay, okay, and then you like sit back down, and they kind of like square back up. But now that guy's up a little bit, and then they go back at it and kind of like exchange blows, and like, yeah. it, it, it's cool, it's cool. I was fucking with it. Yeah, it's like soccer, or the ball keeps on. The, the closer the goal, the close. Oh no, okay, they didn't score that. Okay, okay, we're getting, here we are. That guy's close though. We're that guy's been getting close. Yeah, yeah. Watch out for him. Yeah, for real. And then the San Antonio guy, he fucking got was in danger, got rocked, and kind of like got out of it, and then like beat the dude down, and then submitted him, and then the crowd went wild, bro. Goes nuts. Yeah, it was so tight. That's awesome. Um, there was a Russian fighter. He came out to a very Russian song. It was like no, no music, no instruments. It was just acapella. Acapella. Wow. And he walked acapella, out. Acapella, Russian like, vibes, bro. And I don't know what that lady was saying, but he was tapped in. He was bro. feeling it. Yeah. And then everybody was like, boo. This is America. USA. Where's the guitar? USA. Or the bass. <laughs> they, were, they screamed USA at that guy for a long time. It was nuts. I was like, damn. This feels racially charged, guys. <laughs> and then I was like, there's a war going on. We, they, this might be racially charged. I don't know. Yeah. But then Jeez, he, he was like the best person at handling the crowd. He was like, okay. Okay, you're going to be... Okay. That's extra juice. Yeah. That's extra juice. And, like, the whole fight, he was just so crowd-respondent. Like, he was winning the fight, and then, like, halfway through the second round, this dude, Chidi Bang Bang, got a nice kick on him, like, wow, right on his stomach, and it made a lot of noise, and everybody was like, ah! It was, like, the first big pop. We were, like, kind of waiting for him to beat. Yeah. We were all kind of rooting for Chidi, man. I told you. USA. <laughs> he also came out to some hard hip-hop. We were like, there we go. What was it? I the, he had his own little song. It was oh, something okay, about okay, like okay. some shit though, bro. It was like okay. it reminded me of Ti. It reminded me of like I, I remember. I might come out to like what you know about that. That'd love, be hard too, right? I love the full circle moment there. Shout out Ti. Flowers. I love that guy. Roses. I've been bumping a lot of Ti lately, actually. Let's go. And we did big things popping on the yeah a nice. little freestyle we did too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's up? Uh, so the Russian guy's beating Chidi. Yeah, and the guy gets kicked hard. The Russian dude and everybody goes, Wah! and the guy like takes a step back. He looks at the crowd like, what are you talking about? Boom. And it was the hardest shit. Like, that was one of the best moments of the fight. He was, like, not having our shit. And then he won by decision. And I was, oh. and then, like, the lady next to me was, like, quietly rooting for him and, like, telling her son to, like, not be a dickhead, basically. Like, nah, he's, that, like, that's hard. That, means, what, that man looks like he's on a mission right now to take somebody's soul. Son, don't, don't, that's not goofy at all. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. he won, and she was like, "I told you, I told you that motherfucker was about his business. About his business. For, he did it. Foreigner in a foreign land. He whooped that ass. Yeah, it was crazy. Away so, game, baby. MMA was five. Uh, the Close. card fight was Marlon Vera, aka Cheeto Vera. That was our guy against Corey. Nice, good pull. Corey, something Russian. Pepperhausen. Pepperhausen. Sandhauser. Sandhausen. It's not his name. <sighs> Close enough. You know what I'm saying. You know who I'm talking about. He looks like a history teacher with a back tattoo. No one thought this goofball was going to win. Cheeto, he was a Russian guy? 
Uh, no, he was a white dude. Oh, okay, so the, the Russian guy was not the main card. No, that I was just that. like in a, in a build up fight. But so Cheeto he, was playing. He was better fighting. at the crowd than the, the main card, though. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it was really good. But m- fucking Corey Sandhauser, his name's like Sandpiper or something like that. He was about his motherfucking business. Because Cheeto's kind of like a goon, I realized. Like, I just came in. They told me to root for Cheeto. They said he's like a wrecking ball. Like, that's our guy. That's Joe Rogan's guy. That's Joe Rogan's guy. Joe Rogan said Cheeto's a fucking animal. We're going to go watch Cheeto be an animal. I was like, <sighs> hurt. Oh, yeah. he, he's crazy, bro. He, he comes out to Action Bronson. And he's just so much swag, bro. Like, so much swag. And he crawls into the cage like a fucking animal. And you're just like, yo, I want to see this. And he's all tatted, like, from head to toe. His tattoos are sick, bro. You're just like, this dude's going to. But nah. He looks scurry. Corey came out and just was like, when he crawled in the cage, he, like, walked over him. He's like, yeah, you want to crawl in here? Right, pussy. You have to bleep that one out. But that was the energy that I saw. It was like, the ref was like, what are you doing, bro? And like, from every moment, like, he just was on top of him. Like, no, you're not, you're not getting nothing off. Ugh. And then eventually, Cheeto kind of was like, I ain't getting nothing off. Like, and then you could tell that Cheeto was like trying to knock him out in the last round. Just do anything to like get into some conflict and throw something big or do a kick or an elbow or some shit. And then like, Corey was kind of playing just defense. Like, if you don't let yourself get into that big rhythmic moment, you probably can't get knocked out. Like you can just kind of like, especially if you're up, right? Yeah, you have the points by decision. But then you felt there was one moment where he was like, "All right, bitch, let's fucking knock." And then like he kind of swung a couple times, and then like they hit, and then they backed out, and he was like, "That like that was it. I, that was so stupid of me to do. Like I'm just playing that was defense." A risk. Yeah. But it was so. There's just something special about seeing like the fighters like having their moment to compete, like being in that like. That's some barbaric shit. That's some Roman. Fucking Coliseum shit. One of the fighters came out to Amazing, and it was like, Kanye. It's amazing. Oh. I'm the reason. Oh. Everybody fired up this evening. Oh. I'm a monster. Oh. I'm a killer. Oh. Never be soft. And no matter. <laughs> yeah, dog. Like, <clears throat> that was, I couldn't imagine how he felt. Because his whole life was like fight camp. And now he's walking into like a sold out arena. On, he's like, play Amazing. Let me walk out there. And, like, he was the reason why we were all fired up right then. Fired up, yeah. Like, that guy's life is, I respect that so much that it makes me a fan of fighting. I, don't, I didn't really like sitting in a coliseum. My knees hurt. I didn't like all the all the racial tension in the in the crowd over the Russian guy. And, like, I don't know. I'm just playing. But, like, a lot of that experience wasn't necessarily my favorite part. But, like, watching a dude, like, the thing do the thing. That you all came to see. And then when the winners would get emotional, it made me emotional. I was, like, wanted to cry with him. I was, like, yo, like. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine how good that feels to yeah, get your dub. Come out victorious. Get your bucket. Amazing. Definitely worth the experience 100%. Just to see. It's like going to a horse race and seeing, like, I don't know, like a horse win a race is, like, kind of cool, right? Uh-huh. But this was, like, that times a billion. I can imagine. <laughs> it's like a person sacrificing everything they have to have one shot in this Dangerous professional shit, organization. Too. Being something you wouldn't do. Oh, fuck no. Not like that. Fuck no. No. Nah, you I'm good. They're, they're more brave than me. I ain't trying to do that. And then they, when they win, it's just like, it represents your win. It represents our win. We all want to be a fighter. We are all, we're all fighting. You know what I'm saying? We all got to fight every day. Like, I think fighters know they represent that. Yeah, absolutely. Wait a minute, I think we're going to try to wrap it up and land this plane here. That was episode number six. It's a, it's a nine now. About nine hours of footage out there for us. Six episodes deep. More clips coming. More everything coming. The three pack I mentioned earlier is coming. Yeah, yes. music videos dropping. I just dropped the other one, Gone. That's an old, old. We, we we wrote that so long ago. Had that for so long. Just dropped that Gone music video. It's on YouTube now. Check it out. It's one of our, it's like, I, I, that was like, it, chronologically, it's like Gone, TLP, New Era, Selfish, and then like continued onward from that. Yeah. Um, you know? So like Gone is like, like our first, first thing that like we kind of kept. We we had a whole project before that. Yeah, but, I was like, we had, I, <laughs> was Gone on the EP? No. Nah. Okay. Surreal? Oh, but Light Show was. So some of that made it on the TLP. Oh, but Surreal? No. That's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all I was saying. But either way, new music video out there. New a new era music video dropping after that. Three pack. Everything's going up. Yeah, it's awesome. I can't wait for you guys to listen to our new music. I think you're going to like it a lot. And hopefully catch us on Kill Tony. Catch our podcast next week. Yes. And we'll just keep rumbling. We'll keep rumbling. Yeah, I love y'all. Absolutely. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where we